and uh, we've got a good topic today. Our topic is uh, paid in full. You can see there by that screen, paid in full, and um, it's, it's really good, isn't it, when you get an invoice and then you look at all your other invoices and they got a stamp on there, paid in full. That's a very welcoming sign. <coughs> That's for sure. Well, I believe we're all the same. We all want to get our bills down. We all want to um, be debt-free. Even the Bible says, Oh man, oh no man nothing but to love him. Well, that's a good goal to have in life. I know I'm working on it. I'm sure you are too. But um, I'm not going to be talking about uh, that necessarily. But debt is debt, not only in money, but in sin. The wage of sin is death. See, wages, that's so your money. So, um, sin is broken law, by the way. Broken law is sin. So when you break the law, you're in debt to sin. Well, that's not very nice, is it? We don't want to have debt around our necks. But the truth of the matter is, the law demands payment in full. It demands it. But the good news is that someone came along called Jesus Christ and he paid for your sin and my sin uh, on the cross. It was stamped, paid in full. That is the good news of the gospel because all have sinned, therefore all are in debt to the slave master. You know, we've got to serve somebody. That's what was said by Bob Dylan. You've got to serve somebody. One of his songs. Well, either we can be a slave to a very hard taskmaster, which the devil is, or we can be a slave to a friend, a good friend. And uh, that's the choice that we have. Um, I mean... This friend I'm talking about is, he'll never let you down. He'll never betray you. That's Jesus. He called us his friends. Well, if he called us his friends, he must have in mind that we are sort of related in a way. You see, Jesus was the kinsman redeemer. But it had to be legal. Everything has to be legal. You know, we have our earthly courts. Well, you've got the heavenly courts. They're just the same. They work on the same principle. You know, you've got a, uh, a prosecuting attorney. Then, then you have a, your lawyer, your advocate. Then you've got the judge. And then the judge eventually pronounces your sentence. No, not your sentence. The verdict. Guilty or not guilty. If it's guilty, then, of course, you're going to get a verdict and the sentencing will take place. Well, it's real. It's, it's, you can't escape it. The law was added, the Bible says, because of sin. Paul said it before the law came, he said he was free. But then the law came, and all of a sudden he found out that he was in bondage. Romans 7 then. That chapter is all about Oh, woe is me, a wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of sin, this body of death. Then Romans 8, 1 comes along and says, Hey, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Full stop there, you know. I know this goes on to say uh, who, who, who don't operate in the flesh but in the spirit, but actually that's just a transposition from what was said further down. It should read like this. There's no condemnation to those only in Christ Jesus. Full stop. Period. Uh, that's, that's the truth. There is none. No condemnation. No down judgment. Because the verdict was given. And you were set free. So... We know that the wage of sin is death. We know that Jesus paid the price of sin on the cross at Calvary. 
And we now know that the law demands payment in full. Well, this was a difficult one, wasn't it? Volsin started with our father Adam at that time. He's not our father now, but our human father, Adam, sinned. And when he sinned, and Eve sinned, they broke the law or broke the command. There's only one command at that time. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, even one law is hard to keep. And so the whole creation was plunged into slavery. We're slaved to that evil one, the devil. The whole world's in bondage. That's why the Bible says all of creation is groaning, groaning, waiting for the redemption of their bodies through the sons of God that will manifest in the earth one day. Soon, all of creation is groaning. Maybe you hear yourself groaning every now and again. I know I, I, I have, I do. I groan. Well, what's that groaning? Well, it's the intercessor in you, the Holy Spirit, who's groaning in inside because... All of creation is praying, God, deliver us from this body of sin. So um, God's going to answer that. Of course, we're waiting and we're waiting, but he's the God of patience and he's teaching us patience. But the truth of the matter is, it's got to be done legally. Well, it was done legally on the cross of Calvary or the place of the skull. It was done legally. Sin demanded death, demands death. And so he who knew no sin became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. There had to be a death to overcome death. And the death of the Son of God was the answer to the enslavement. The whole world is under the bondage and fear of death. The master of death, the lord of death, the god of this world. But you know what? When Christ died, the Bible says that he became powerless. He lost his power. He lost his power over bringing death upon people. But of course you've got to have Christ now, the living one in you. I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So there's some on the earth who are walking dead people. And there's some who have received this wonderful gift of eternal life and now are alive. The old man died, but now their life is hid in Christ in God. And that's why we preach the gospel, to get people to come to the light, come to know that Jesus Christ is the way out of death. And he who believes in him shall never die. Well, you say, well, that's true, but I know my, 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 my relative, da, 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 they were born again, believe when they died. Yeah, well, the body died, but they're not dead. They're not dead. Their body died, but they're going to get a new body. If they, if they died in Christ, they're going to get a new one. That's the whole wonderful thing about this gospel that we preach. We preach hope by faith, life, eternity, immortality. It's all around the corner. We're very close to all this taking place. The resurrection of those that died in Christ will be raised up from the graves. We're going to have a new body. I don't believe all that. Well, you, you got you, you got an old body, didn't you? How'd you get the old body? That was, a, you know, you didn't make it, did you? No, you got it. It's a gift. It was given to you. God designed the, the way the body's come. And, and you don't know what it's going to look like. Well, you don't know what this new body's going to look like, are they? If God gave you one body, he can certainly give you another one. But the second one is going to be much glorious or more glorious than the first one. Paul the Apostle said he called it his, an, an evil body. You know, he, he wasn't, he was he waiting for his new body. He said, oh, the hope of the resurrection. Oh, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. That's the first resurrection. 
That's where the overcomers are going to be resurrected. And if you're an overcomer and that resurrection morning comes, you won't experience death. And there's going to be a people who will not experience death. They'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And this mortal will put on, put on immortality. Nah, I don't believe that. Well, because you're not a believer. We, we talk about faith here. The just shall live by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Can't see it yet. But uh, if I've got one body, why can't God give me another body? Glorified body to look like Jesus' body now. His resurrected body. We should be like him. Because we should see him as he is. It's coming. But you've got to have faith. Of course you've got to have faith. Will God give you the faith? Just seek him. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened unto you. What? The door. Jesus is the door to life, to immortality. So, faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And if you're not a believer and you're hearing what I'm saying, there's a point in time when God could put a little faith in you and you could just say, oh my God, I want that. Yeah, I want that. Well, the first thing you've got to recognize is you're a sinner. You've got a debt called sin. It's got to be paid. Well, who's going to pay it? There's no, no, no one can pay it but the one who's already paid for it. It's already been paid for. Uh, and so, receive him. Receive Jesus Christ. You just acknowledge the fact that he died. He, he, he rose from the dead. He was raised up from the dead. And he, he then went into the heavenlies. He was lifted up into the heavenlies in a cloud and he went to the courts in heaven and he sprinkled his own blood on the mercy seat and on all the articles of furniture there in the heavenlies well it takes faith to believe what I'm telling you but you know you can read it in the Bible Romans 10 9 tell you how to get saved you should believe in your heart Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Go to your Bible and read it. Well, you know, I'm hoping that a lot of people will see this video later on, because I, I, I put it up, and you can go back years and see all the videos. But some people who don't know Christ, who are seeking Christ, will come across this video. I'm reaching out to the overcomers, by the way. I'm not really reaching evangelistically. I want to reach the overcomers and encourage the overcomers that there's a hope of his coming real soon. And the overcomers are going to be the ones that God's going to use to teach this world, all the nations of the earth, his ways. So you want to be in the overcomer group, and these are the ones I want to, I want to find people who are, who are interested in this overcoming concept. Well, an overcomer is someone who ceases from their own works. They're not trying to work their way to heaven or work their way to God. They just believe by faith that they receive it and acknowledge that they, they, they died when they believed on Jesus Christ. Remember, when Jesus died, you died. You are dead. Your life is hid in Christ in God. Well, if you died, then you were buried as well. You had to get into a place where you just sat there for a while until you felt the power of God resurrecting you up. You believe that you, you're already seated in the heaven that's in Christ Jesus. You were resurrected up. This is the way God sees it. Now, we've got to teach the nations how to see it the way God sees it. So we've got to teach people the verticals, not the horizontals. The horizontal is the earthly viewpoint. Uh, the vertical is the God viewpoint. So we've got to see it through eyes that have been anointed, touched by God. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might see clearly again the truth, to know the truth. It's to see the truth, to know the truth. Jesus said, my words, their spirit and their truth. Their spirit, their life-giving words. 
Boy, this is good news, you know that. I get very excited about the good news. And paid in full. Come on, paid in full, that stamp on the invoice. You're a sinner, you're in debt. But now all of a sudden the big stamp comes down on your invoice and says, paid in full, he's free, he's free to go. Now, let me give you the insights into the law. The law was added because of sin. But the law demands payment in full, but the law can make no one perfect. Well, that's, that's a bit of a bore, isn't it? You've got the law, and all it does is sort of condemn you. Yeah, it's meant to. It's meant to tell you that you're a sinner. And then it leads you to know Christ, Jesus Christ. So the law spotlights sin. Not only your sin, everybody's sin. The whole world spotlights it. You can't do away with the law. But if you are in Christ and Christ is in you, the law doesn't touch you. The law of your land, the law of the United Kingdom. I mean, I don't worry about the law unless I break the law. Then the law, I feel the effects of it. And I've got to go to court, stand before the judge, hopefully get a good good verdict. So he said, the law, don't worry about the law. The law is not for the righteous man, it's for the unrighteous. Well, if you receive Jesus Christ, you have received the righteousness of God in Christ. He became sin that you might be the righteousness of God in Christ. So the law is not for you. You don't want to come under the law, the effects of the law. The law is rigid. I mean, there's no room to move here. It's black and white. That's why you've got to wear mercy around your neck. Call out for mercy. And the law's not going away, you know. Jesus fulfilled the law, but the law's still here. The law will always be here. The law is holy. The law is perfect, but it can't make you perfect. Unless the law is fulfilled, the law demands payment in full, there must be a death of the sinner. We're all going to die. Yeah. We we'll, all we'll had it. Yep. Except God had a plan. Him and God. God and Christ. Before the foundation of the world, he was crucified. Because he already agreed to do what the Father wants him to do, which is to, to redeem his creation. And so Jesus said yes, and therefore he's already crucified. There's faith for you. It's already done. And so in the history of time and mankind, at a certain point, God sent his son. Now this is why you've got to have faith. Jesus took on flesh and blood. Like you and I, we are legally on this earth because we've come through the seed, the corruptible seed, through Adam, and we took on flesh and blood. Now the only person who can redeem such a one is us is a relative. It's called a kinsman. It can only be a relative. See, if Jesus came as an angel or a spirit being, yeah, it would look fantastic, but the fact is he wouldn't have the legal right to redeem God's creation, including you and me. He wouldn't have the right. But the law gives the right to that legal flesh and blood relative to redeem someone who's enslaved to a master who is hard, unforgiving, you know who that is, the devil. So, under the law, Moses' law, if you fell into debt to a foreigner, a foreigner is someone that didn't, wasn't born, you know, it wasn't born in that nation, 
your father. You fall in debt to a foreigner because in Israel there were people who were not Israelites. They weren't Jewish. They weren't from the tribes. And so they could have got in, started to do business, trading. And you got involved with that person doing business and trading and you lost all your money. I mean, you became broke. And you didn't even have to sell your property to try and get out of debt to this very shrewd individual. But you couldn't get out of debt. And now the law demands payment. You see, the law backs up those who are, are owed. I see the devil owns it all because Adam gave it to him through sin, wrong choices. But now God's going to get it all back. But he's got to do it legally. See, he, he looks over his word and his law to perform it and his promises. God works in, in, in the legalities. Jesus Christ, when he came here, fulfilled the law. He didn't say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Jesus, I'm, I'm the creator, and uh, just do what I tell you. No, he, he had to prove himself faithful. He had to suffer. And he that has set us free was made perfect in suffering. He had to pay the, he had to do the law. He had to get baptized by John the Baptist. He had to give his half shekel. Every male over 20 had to give a half shekel to redeem themselves, their body. He did it all. He paid the, he paid the temple money. He didn't miss out on anything. He fulfilled the law perfectly. If he didn't, he couldn't have been our redeemer. Okay, so now we have a situation. Let's just take an individual, then you take the nation. Then you take the world. Individual, you and me. Jesus was legally given the rights to redeem you and me. He is given the rights by the law, by God. Because he came through flesh and blood. He wasn't an angel flesh and blood just like you and me he was born of a woman of course the seed wasn't from joseph that would have been corruptible seed the seed came from the father god himself through the holy spirit the holy spirit impregnated mary with god's seed so therefore this jesus became the lamb of god well he was always the lamb of god to be sacrificed for sin. But he didn't have any spot, no markings. He was perfect because he never sinned. Perfect. He's the only one who's ever lived that could be say he was perfect. And so you couldn't have a robber or a thief or whatever die in, in your place. It wouldn't work. Because the devil owns everything and he's put a price on your sin and you you don't have enough to pay him with you don't have enough money to pay him he's not going to let you go not going to let you go i mean until eternity you're going to work 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 you're a slave he's going to let you go and then all of a sudden jesus comes along and at 33, he laid down his life for you, me, and the whole of the nation of Israel and the whole world of flesh and blood. He laid down his life. Okay, so now we've got a situation. We've got you and me, all the Jewish tribes, all the Israelites. Then you've got all the nations. You got, I mean, you've got a lot of people. They've all sinned, because all have sinned. And they've all got to be redeemed. And they've got to be related, in a sense. They've got to have flesh and blood. Because he came, and he had flesh and blood. So now he can be the kingsman to set us free. 
And he chose to do that. That's how the law works. A friend couldn't set a slave free. Let's say you, were, you, you lost your home, you lost your money to this foreigner who knew how to wheel and deal. You made bad deals. You lost your inheritance. You're a slave. You've got to work for him. You've got to work. You've got to work. Then a friend says, oh, man, look at that good old John over there. Man. Well, uh, Mr. Mr. Taskmaster, and I would say Mr. Devil. Um, I'd, I'd like to pay uh, John's uh, debt. No, no, not interested. But when a family member comes along, and that family member chooses to pay that family member's debt, that's legal. That's the law. The law says that can take place. And the law says that taskmaster, that slave person, the devil, has no choice but to accept it. He has to accept it. That's the law. Law of Moses. That's the example. You can't say, no, no, I don't think I want to uh, take that amount of money. I want to keep my slave. No, no. If he has the full amount, he can pay it, and the devil has to let that person go. He's powerless to stop that slavery to continue. Powerless. But that family member, that kin's person has to have the full amount so how much does he owe <laughs> the devil said you really want to know the wages of sin is death let me tell you this is a big debt big debt and he gives him the amount oh god I don't have that much money I don't have that much money so what how much my God, when you think about it, that's just one slave. How about the whole world? Uh, all the people have been born. The whole There's got to be something precious enough, rich enough to pay the debt. What can it be? Well, may, maybe it's the pearl of a great price. Pearls are very precious. You know, we're talking about a lot of people here in slavery. A pearl, a pearl. Well, you know, the, the, new, the new Jerusalem... The temple, each gate is going to be made out of a single pearl. I mean, that must be enough. No, there's not enough. There's not enough. No, no, I'm not going to let them go. So let me ask you, what do you think it is that is so precious, priceless, that it would pay the debt that the world owes? Because all have said. Can you think of something? Can you think of something? Well, here it is. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. The blood is priceless. And the devil knows it. That's why when you mention the blood, he trembles. And more enslaved people are set free. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. He is powerless under the blood name of Jesus Christ oh in fact when the blood came out of the side of Jesus that was God's blood you know that's the blood of God so you can't put a price on this I mean it's it's ranked top that's it it can purchase anything and everything because God owns everything everything is his blood apparently I don't have to look this up but the blood comes from the father, not the mother. And who was the mother of Jesus? Mary. But who was the father of Jesus? God. God's seed. So that in Mary was producing the blood of Jesus. And when that blood was shed, oh my God, all oh heaven must have just said hallelujah. Must have been dancing in the streets. That means the whole of creation can be redeemed because he has the price he can pay it there's nothing he can't buy because his blood is the father's blood 
Well, now we have a kinsman who says, right, so you've, um, you've been enslaved. Okay, well, I can pay your debt because I have the price. No matter what he asks, he said, well, I think he's asking about a million pounds. Oh, it's nothing. The blood of Jesus, my blood, priceless. All you've got to do is accept me over the devil. Who you want to serve? You've got to serve somebody. Then you make the choice. Yes, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I make him, him my kinsman. I make him my savior, my deliverer, in whom I shall trust. That's good news, isn't it? You made the right choice. You're set free. Now, under the law, the law of Moses, see, the law not only works on the earth, it's working in heaven as well. The law is God's character. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. The trouble is it doesn't work to make you perfect because you're not spiritual. You're fleshly. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, people are being set free all over the world for thousands of years since the time of his death at the place of the skull. People are being set free. The price is paid and he's just dishing it out. He ain't going to go broke. No. He's going to go broke. And the devil is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And eventually we're going to look at the devil one day and laugh. We'll, laugh. You mean, we'll say, you mean this was the one that deceived the whole world? I'm going to point it at me. This one? it be about that big. He's defeated, folks. Jesus defeated him with a weapon called death. <laughs> he fought death with death. If the devil knew, the Bible said, if the demonic horns knew what was taking place at Calvary, they would never have crucified the Son of Glory. It was a trap. Trapped him. Legally, he can redeem anyone who's under the devil's bondage. Anyone. You just got to call out to Jesus. And he'll pay. He'll pay. He'll pay. Legally. It's all legal. You pay. You set free. You walk away. Now, under the law, you're free, but you're not free to do your own thing. See, people think, I'm free. I can, I can free now. I can, I can sin and I can do whatever I want because I'm free. Jesus paid the price. No, 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 no. The kinsman now owns you instead of the devil. In fact, you belong to Jesus now. You belong to Jesus. And you know what? He's still going to work you. He's going to work you. Now you say by grace through faith, not of works, it's the gift of God. But how about study to show yourself approved unto God? A workman, neither to be ashamed. The work he's going to give you is to study that word to renew your mind. And he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop at it. You're going, to, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to learn the word of God. If you don't learn it here, you're going to learn it later on. So you might as well start now. You're going to have the mind of Christ. You have to have the mind of Christ. You're working. Now, salvation of the Spirit is a gift. It's a gift. Uh, eventually, the salvation of the body is a gift. It's a gift. But the salvation of the soul, it's a work. You've got to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman neither to be ashamed. So that's your work to do. You, you, you're now uh, under the master Jesus. You're still a slave, but you've got the master Jesus. He's kind. He's loving, forgiving. But he wants you to work. He wants you to study. He wants you to divide the word of God. Paul the Apostle said, you have not so learned Christ. You, you've learned everybody else's mind, but you haven't learned Christ. you learned all the doctrines of everything else, but you haven't learned the doctrine of Christ. And anyone that have not the doctrine of Christ is none of his. So we've got to work.
study. Study makes you tired, you know. It really does. You study, you get tired. Well, you don't get tired when you read um, novels, but when you study the Word of God, it gets tired. You've got to work. But it gets easier as you continue, as you continue, little by little, little by little, your mind is being renewed. Renewing the mind process is very simple, really. It's replacing the sense knowledge with the revelation knowledge truths. So we're replacing the sense knowledge so-called facts with the revelation knowledge truths of God's word. It's a replacement. You'll be replacing it. So in other words, the mind that is replacing sense knowledge becomes a spiritual mind. See, the, the law was weak in the sense that it was working with flesh. And man's flesh was weak, or his mind was weak. You've got a fleshly mind, or you've got a spiritual mind. So the law was holy, the law is holy, the law is perfect, the law won't break at all, but it can't make you perfect because of your flesh. I'm talking about now the more your mind flesh, the fleshly mind, or carnal mind, the Bible says is enmity against God, was not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can be. So the challenge we have now is we are, we're freed from the the old taskmaster, the devil. Now we're in the, in the paid the price. Jesus paid the price. You were bought with the price, the bus. I'm bought with the price. The most precious gift of all is the blood of Jesus, uh, and I'm free. I'm free now to do what my master wants me to do, and I hear and I obey. It's called the obedience of faith. You're not free to do your own thing. Who told you that? If you're a Christian, you've got to listen to what your master wants. You've got to have listen to the master's voice. Remember those years ago, there was a, a record label called His Master's Voice. I love that with the big parlophone thing and the dog sitting under there listening, waiting to hear something come out of that funnel, you know. His master's voice. We're here to hear his master's voice. Hear and do. And that's your freedom. That's your liberty. And once we start hearing more, eyes of our understanding open. I'm going to close with this. The Bible says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world's way of thinking, that be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what the will of God is. That which is good, acceptable, and perfect. You've got to prove it. In your time on this earth, you've got to prove that God's word is true. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Well, that spells gap, doesn't it? G-A-P. Well, that's why sometimes we should say to ourselves, I've got to take a gap year. I've got to take some time off and learn the mind of Christ, to study the word of God. And let God lead you to take you where you can get this learning, the right stuff, the good stuff. But he'll teach you. If you don't have a place where you can go and get taught, because eventually you're going to have to know that you're going to have to learn to hear the voice of God for yourself. You can go to Bible schools and colleges, and nothing wrong with that, but eventually you've got to hear yourself personally. And you've got to have a communion with God and a fellowship with God because our fellowship is with the Father and Son. Because we can get, again, with the carnal mind, we can do things by rote, trying to learn the mind of Christ by rote. No, no, it's, it's, it's an anointing. And if you're seeking and you're knocking and saying, I want to know the truth, the Spirit of God will help you. He'll lead you into the right places the right books to read. And of course, you'll open your eyes to the Word of God as you memorize the Word of God. That's our work. That's our work. Remember, your spiritual salvation is a gift. Your new body that's coming is going to be a gift. And every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And there's no suffering with it. There's no... There's no it's perfect, it's, it's right. There's no shadow of turning with the gifts of God. Receive the gift of God. But when it comes to this mind to be renewed, 
<laughs> you got to work. You got to work it. And then the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You pray, Lord, open up my eyes, open up my ears, that I might hear the teaching. And that then causes the mind to become spiritual. Now, once you've got a spiritual mind, it's in tune with your spirit nature, which is Christ. And one day you're going to have a body to match, which is spiritual too, like Christ's body. You're going to be saved spirit, soul, and body. Uh, in the meantime, we, we're just working on the spirit, soul. Body's coming later, but it's coming. So get into the overcomer group. Overcome sense living. When your body is hurting, you say, by stripes I'm healed. You don't see any result, but you stand. Having done all the stand, you stand and you speak the truth. By stripes I'm healed. By stripes I'm healed. And guess what? Down the road, some, I don't know how long, it could be instant, it could be a year, 10 years, I don't know. If you stand on that promise, see, the fact is we, 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 we give in too quick. Having done all the stand, you stand. For how long? As long as it takes. But at least stand with the understanding that the just shall live by faith. Anyway, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And if in if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, there's no down sentence anymore. That's all gone. And you're coming to a place where you come into the perfection of his mind. And therefore you have a clean conscience. Your conscience is cleansed. Anyway, I hope this helped you. If you enjoyed this, share it with others. And don't forget to subscribe and click that little icon so you get notifications when I'm on. I'm on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. p.m. London time. I think that is um, 11.30 in the morning Pacific time. But I'm about here just to give good news of the gospel and hopefully give you some insights that you hadn't had before. Share it. Tell others. Jesus is coming soon, folks. But remember that stamp, huh? paid in full. Paid in full. The devil is powerless. I thank you and I pray for you. I pray for you, all those who hear and see this video, that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you might know the hope of his calling, and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, in the saints. God bless you. Appreciate you. Until next time, stay free, stay blessed, and remember, it's paid in full. Your debt, your sin debt. Until the next time.